most of the time, optimization is reactive, not proactive. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm saying it happens too late. Yes, I know what some of you might be thinking, but we don't want to optimize too early. Yes, that is also true, but certain optimizations we actually want to do early. For example, how many SQL queries do you run on a single page in your app? Two, three, 10? And how many duplicate queries are there? SQL queries are expensive. They are relatively slow because they go from one system to another and usually over a network connection. Plus, many database hosting providers charge you per query and the amount of data transferred. Keeping the amount of queries that run to a minimum is really important for multiple reasons. Do you count the queries you run on a page? Do you even check? How do you check? How long does it take to set up this check? Well, only a minute. So there are no excuses not to find out how to improve your app's SUL queries. In this video, I will show you a few small steps to set up Prisma Optimize, the benefits, and also how Optimize AI can help us improve our Prisma ORM queries even further with AI chat. So what is Prisma Optimize? We all know the famous open source Prisma ORM. We all use it daily and we love it. But when you want to take your project to the next level, what is the next step? Optimize from Prisma. Optimize is an AI-driven query analysis tool where you can gain deep insight and get actionable recommendations to improve your database queries, making your app run faster and cheaper. In addition to the insightful query metrics and AI-powered recommendations, there is an AI assistant to help you understand the recommendations by asking follow-up questions or to review your code. This is all done locally. You don't even need to deploy your app to get the results you need to optimize your app. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we can be proactive and test new pages and features before deploying. But we won't stop there. There are two more tools you should be aware of also that will complement your Prisma ORM, but I will save mentioning those until the end. Let's jump straight into coding and see some results. The only requirement is you use Prisma ORM in your project. I've selected my latest SaaS project to add Optimize to, so I will show you some real world examples. A bit of background on my app. I'm using Next.js and Prisma ORM with a Postgres database that you can see here. Log in to Prisma Optimize and straight away you can see it's given us instructions on what to do next to add it to our app. This will only take a moment. I've opened the schema.prisma file and we're going to add the preview feature equal to tracing. So let me copy and paste that in there now. And next we need to add the npm dependencies. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in the terminal. It's going to install the latest Prisma client as well as the latest Optimize as well. And then we also want to add Prisma. And now we need to run the mpx command to generate a new Prisma client. Now go to where you instantiate the Prisma client. Mine's in my lib folder, yours could be somewhere else. And what we want to do next is add the import at the top. And then we want to extend our Prisma client. And don't forget to add the API key, which is called optimize API key to your N file. I'm just gonna show you my example M file because I don't want you to see my key, but you'll need to add it to your .m file as well. I've just added it at the end here. And to actually get the value of this, you can go to your profile and then settings, and then you can create a new API key and you can give it a name. And here's one I created earlier. But do remember to treat your API key like a password, hence why I'm not showing you mine. That is it. Now we are all set. Let's start seeing how good or bad our app is. I've now started Postgres and I'm going to run my Next.js app locally. So npm run dev. And you can see my homepage is on localhost 3000. So now we can press start new recording on the optimized dashboard and reload my homepage. The results come in immediately on the dashboard without reloading it. But what jumps out for you? We're on the queries page. It lists all the Prisma client queries that have been run and they're all green. So nothing alarming there. We can click on any query result in the list and it shows further information. 
pattern, average duration, count, and error rate, as well as the raw query and related queries that ran. I can go back to the query list as well. I've hit stop recording for now. We can start again shortly to do some more, but I'm gonna go along to the groups tab. I definitely see something alarming here. The unique user query runs three times on the homepage. That is way too much. And because I'm familiar with my project, I think it's because of the Next.js server components being broken down into smaller components and each making its own query for the user. That is something we should definitely fix as a matter of urgency. I mean, that query should only run once and it should be quite an easy fix, especially now that I'm aware that it runs multiple times. Like before, you can click on the item in the list and it goes to the query details as we saw before from the queries list page. So when you click on any result, it goes to this page and it gives you more details. Now it's gonna get even more exciting. What is AI going to suggest? So I'm gonna go across to the recommendations page. Unsurprisingly, it's recommended that I improve the repeated query. I mean, that's the, the top of the list, it's the first one. I'm still shocked that I made this mistake and I'm super glad that it was brought to my attention by Optimize so that I can fix it. Now we've gone into that item in the recommendation list. At the top, it gives some immediate recommendations to improve the performance and reduce the load in our database with an explanation and example code. Below the recommendations, it goes into further details. And what I really like is that it also explains when to use it, but also when not to use query caching, which I think is super important to understand. And if you're ever unsure about anything, at the top right, you have an Ask AI button, and here you can ask questions. The query cache is a great recommendation, but I see from their concerns that large data sets should not be cached. But how big is too big? Let me ask. What size of results is too big to be cached? Here you can see I got my answer. For Prisma Accelerate, the current maximum cache size per query is 10 megabytes. Larger results won't be cached. Thank you so much AI for answering my question. Let's have a look at another web page in our app. But before we do, I'm just gonna rename the results that we had before and I'm gonna call it home. And let me navigate to the campaign view page. So let me pick one of my campaigns. The campaign view page is really important. It will be visited very often by every logged in user. Results are in, so I'm gonna hit stop recording. There are no duplicates this time, but we do have an orange. I mean, that can't be good. Let's have a look at the recommendation. So I've clicked on the orange item. It's showing us the query and the raw queries as well. There are no duplicates this time, as we can see at the bottom, but let's go into recommendations. Having a look at the recommendations, it's clear we're fetching way too much data. The recommendation page suggests using a select or omit, which makes sense as I'm not using all the data returned, especially with so many joins where each is returning all the data. And also it, it got me thinking that in the future, if I add any additional columns to the database, then I'll be returning that data as well. And those columns could be quite large, but they're not needed for the app. So I do think it's important we specify which fields we want brought back in our query. So I think this is a great recommendation and I'm glad it's been brought to my attention. In the recommendation, they give us code as they did before to show us how we can use the select or the omit, which I think is really cool. And if we scroll down below that, the reasons are shown and with more details. For example, slower load times, increased resource usage, higher costs, and actually it's a security risk as well. I also really like the note information that is super helpful. You can't use both select and omit or select and include in the same query options at that nesting level. As before, if you have any questions at the top right, you do have Ask AI. Still not convinced? If you're not sure whether to integrate your project with Optimize yet, then why not try it out by using their Optimize starter app? It's a simple to-do app and it will show you what type of improvements you can expect to make to a typical project, even for a small app where you think there might be no scope for improvements. I've got their GitHub repo behind me. 
And you can get started by running the npx command. And you don't even need to set up a database because it uses SQLite. Follow the few steps in the readme to get the app running locally. Don't forget to add your optimized token to the end file. I'm going to hit start recording and I've got the app running here. So let's add some to do items. We can also mark some of the items as completed. And let's delete one of the items as well. As you saw on the left, the optimized page started to populate with queries immediately. Let's jump into the recommendations and, and see what we have. I'm going to hit stop recording. I'm going to go to the recommendations. There's a whole variety of improvements to be made, even on this small project shown in the starter app. These two recommendations are the ones I would start with like causing a full table scan. That is expensive and slow. In the recommendation, it gives a great suggestion about indexing, but also explains the trade-offs with more storage space required and an impact on writes. I love how it gives code examples and not just the theory. Let me head back to the list. We've got query on an unindexed column. Oh my, that is not that good. Again, it is great to see a code example, recommendations, issues, but also there's more detailed explanation, including when and when not to use indexes. So make sure you scroll down the recommendation page and have a look at when not to use these indexes as well. And there's also an additional note and they have a link to their documentation on more information. I'm struggling to find one reason why not to use this tool. Optimize only has benefits and it doesn't interfere with my development workflow. Here are my key takeaways. Optimize early, no pun intended. It is easier to improve these straightforward fixes when we're currently working on them, but we need to be made aware of them in the first place. This is where Optimize comes in. I need to go and improve my project now. I can get the pages loading faster for the user and keep the database cost down for me as well. But before I go, I did promise two other products by Prisma that will help you improve your app even further. If I head over to the products navigation and go down to Accelerate. Prisma Accelerate makes your database global and adds a query level cache with flexible invalidation options directly from the Prisma ORM. Back to navigation and let's head over to Pulse. Prisma Pulse is for those of you who are keen to have real-time events in your app. So when the data changes in your database, your app can react accordingly. Let me know what you think about Prisma's Optimize and how you get on with your projects below. If you want to give Optimize a try, then I have included a link in the description below.